Hi all, this is Les Bozen, clinical psychologist, flightwise fear of flying and other anxiety conditions. Welcome to the channel. It's uh, early December, the first weekend of December 2022 here in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, in mid-November, I started a series of videos trying to help you understand that sometimes the sensations that you experience in a flight or in other forms of public transport or if you're about to prepare a presentation and give it can sometimes misinform us that we're in danger when in fact we're not and this is because historically speaking or in evolutionary times uh, these sensations are incredibly important to save our lives. They've stayed with us all these generations, many thousands of years, and they make themselves known in certain situations where they get elicited. If you prefer the word triggered, that's fine too. And I showed you the last time a young woman who hosts a TV program experiencing the very first safety elevator invented by the Otis company in the 1850s and what happened to her when she fell just a couple of centimeters. Now she'd been told that the elevator would fall seven centimeters and it would catch in the side of the railings. And yet, despite knowing that she was safe, despite all the intellectual information, that's not quite how she experienced it. So let's watch the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. Here we go. Just a little replay, just to let you know what we're doing. Just watch Natasha, she's the young woman on the right hand side, oh sorry, the right hand side of the screen. Have a look as the rope is cut. Ah! Well, that was pretty abrupt. It, it, ooh, it still gets a bit of a vibe. Yes. So what you saw then was Natasha here uh, yelping, holding onto her hat, reflexively gripping the side there despite having some intellectual information that it was perfectly safe and yet falling, 1G, falling at 14 meters per second per second, that's the speed of, that's the acceleration due to gravity, 1G, uh, 32 feet per second per second, um, just seven centimeters causes her to go <gasps> and yelp. Now, that's a vertical sensation. You experience those things in planes and uh, elevators, obviously, but there are also horizontal ones that can trigger the same kind of sensation. And I'm gonna show you those, and it comes from uh, a friend of mine. The source of this information comes from a friend of mine, Daniel Bleakley. You can see his name just up there. Uh, Daniel's uh, formerly, is a mechanical engineer, uh, formerly uh, from central Queensland and you know, there's lots of people in the mining industry in Queensland and at some point in his life uh, some years back he decided uh, to buy himself an electric car a battery electric car in this case a Tesla 3 performance and try to convince the world that that was the future of driving and that we should start to move away from fossil fuels and internal combustion engines uh, and you can try and inform governments of that, but he actually decided to go to those people who work in coal mines and uh, who are pro probably you know, politically negative about the whole thing or, or neutral and say, come for a drive in my Tesla and maybe you'll see what driving an electric vehicle might be about. And so that's what he did. Now I'm gonna show you now the very first video that he created. And he created a series called Miners, M-I-N-E-R-S, Miners in Teslas. And he shows them, and they're the, we witness the very first time they drive in this car, okay? Very first time. And so as part of the video, he points out the various ways the car operates, the screen inside it. It has an accelerator pedal and it has a brake pedal. He talks about how these cars use regenerative braking put energy back into the battery when you take your foot off the accelerator. And I want you to see the reaction of these drivers when he says, just floor it. Just put your foot down, let's find some space and just go zero to 100, just floor it. Don't let go of the pedal, just go for it. And uh, what you're going to see is the expectations of these drivers driving a battery car, a battery car, not a big V8, a battery car. And you're going to see this. Now I have to forewarn you, you're going to hear some Aussies with rather crude language. I can't be bothered beeping it out. 
just go with it. If you don't like it, close your ears, just watch the video. But you're going to hear some language. These are miners in Teslas. <laughs> So just stop completely, hey, <laughs> and just plant it. Hi, scan. Holy! Holy fuck! <laughs> 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 okay, so what you just witnessed there is what's commonly now known as the Tesla smile, where people are so unexpecting of the sensations that a car can actually perform this way, that rather than being fearful, they're delighted and surprised, and that's the that's the sign they get. So I'm going to show you. That was the very first one. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of more now. So here's the next one. Now these are all people who work in the mining industry, and this is their very first time in an electric car. So after Daniel shows them how it all works and they get comfortable, he then always pulls them over to the side of the road and says, "Plant it." So here's number two. This is a, a guy called uh, uh, Gouji or Guji. Let's have a look. Oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Fuck me, Dad, you're like a rocket ship. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Holy. That's so weird, eh? No noise, just No noise. Holy shit. And again, you can see by the choice of language, they were, he was taken by surprise. And the language, the swearing just, just comes out, just, oh, okay. It's very different than in, in other cars. And the thing I want to explain to you is that in most cars, when you accelerate through the gears, whether it be a manual or automatic, the acceleration tends to go uh, a little like this, up, change gears, up, change gears, up, change gears, up, change gears. So at each of those peaks, that's where you get maximum thrust or maximum acceleration, and then it drops off, and the car has to change gears, and off it goes again, okay? In an electric car, it doesn't work that way. The acceleration is relentless. It's simply a straight line. It just keeps going. And so where you expect it to just drop off a little bit, it's not just the initial acceleration. They go, whoa, it's that it doesn't stop. It just keeps accelerating. So after two, three, four, five seconds, it's still accelerating. It's not dropping off at all. And that's what gets to these people. I have a couple more examples. So this is G-forces in a horizontal direction. When we watched the elevator, it was in a vertical direction. So a couple more for you. Uh, and then another driver from central Queensland. This is uh, Azza. So let's have a look at him. And then when you're ready, just plant it. <laughs> That's like a roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, that is some serious acceleration, isn't it? Our, Holy our shit. Good, isn't it? So, the first one we heard, it's like a rocket ship. This one, it's like a roller coaster. And what they're referring to is the G forces. Yeah, the G force that's pushing them back in the seat and he's squeezing their chests. Now, Natasha, come back to Natasha for just one moment. You remember Natasha, she experienced um, G-forces, uh, but her G-force was one G falling, and she went, wow, and yelped, even though she was told it's going to be very, it's going to be a drop, but it's safe. So that's what's going on there. Now, one more for you. This is Ashley. Ashley's a young woman who drives one of those huge haulers, that, that haul minerals and coal and rocks, whatever else, again, in a central uh, Queensland mining. So she drives huge, big diesel trucks. And again, for the first time, she's going into uh, Tesla. It's been explained to her how it's going to work. And again, once more, Daniel's saying to her, Ashley, floor it. Let's have a look. And we're going to do a zero to 100. 
All right? Yeah. So when you're ready, you can basically floor it and just go zero to 100. Um, yeah, you can go right to the floor. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. That was in like two seconds. It's nuts, eh? Fucking hell. So, no, that we encourage swearing on our videos, so that's fine. <laughs> so there she goes. She's totally caught up. She's yelp she yelps just like Ashley did. We went, whoa! And she let out an expletive and then let, let out a few more. And again, just like Natasha falling, the experience of a G-force pushing it back, and I let you have to let you know it's not one G, it's about um 0.8 somewhere between 0.8 and 0.85 G. It's not quite the same as falling uh, in space, but it's it's very strong. Um, you know, this is a regular car, street car. You can just buy and drive around the streets. Again, her violation of expectation, this is not what she expected. And again, doesn't yell, but ah! And grips and just keeps on going. But I want you to have a little bit of a face. In fact, all of them, rather than being scared, it converts very quickly from surprise into delight. And here's what has to happen for you. You're surprised at what your body's doing during turbulence or any other movement. I don't expect you to be delighted by the movement. That's not the issue. You can get excited though, you can convert that energy into excitement, not by learning to like these sensations. That may come, but it's not the expected behavior. I would expect you to. Where the excitement comes from is your ability to manage yourself in this situation and say, I know what to do. I don't like the experience. It's triggering lots of unpleasant sensations, but I'm not unsafe. It's okay. I can deal with this. I can manage myself. And the more I practice doing this, the better I'm going to get at this. And the less afraid I'm going to be of getting on board a plane and going for a flight. And whatever happens, I'll manage it. That's the excitement part. Now, you've got to convert that energy into excitement about your ability to manage the situation. You don't have to learn to like turbulence. One last one. One last one. The man you see here is David Pocock. And uh, this was made last year or the year before. David Pocock is a champion rugby player for Australia. He's represented Australia in rugby. And some years back, he decided to take an interest in climate change. And this is the first time that he is in a Tesla. Okay, this is Daniel's Tesla. His first time, he's going to drive it. David has since put his money where his mouth is. He's given up his regular career and he's now been elected to the Australian Parliament, the House of Representatives. And he represents the Australian Capital Territory. And this is his first time driving a Tesla, despite the fact that he's been very involved in, in, in working hard to have people recognize that climate change uh, is a real thing and that maybe a conversion to electric cars and solar heaters and all sorts of things is probably a good thing to do. So let's watch him in his first time driving a Tesla. When you're ready, David Pocock, you can do a zero to 100 and just floor it, basically. Full flat. Go all the way, all the way. Hang on to it. Right out. That's good. Whoa. That is legit power. That's insane. Yeah, you can punch it again around the corner. This is like zero lag. Okay, I'll pause it there. Again, the same he didn't swear this time, but he went, you can see his face, the eyes bulge, the mouth is dropping a violation of expectations. He did not expect this kind of acceleration from a regular looking car. He'd heard about these cars, but he never experienced them when you drive it. One small story to tell you before I finish this part off and tell you what's coming in the next video. Uh, I had a patient not long ago who had a very significant fear of turbulence and it was very difficult to train him to deal with turbulence because we couldn't simulate it well enough. And I had to go looking for things in order to simulate it. So I invited him to come into my Tesla, not quite as fast as this one. My Tesla does zero to 60 miles an hour in something like 4.2. This car does it seriously in 3.1 seconds. So it's a second faster, but mine is seriously fast. 
took you for a drive with mine. We found some areas. I put my foot down. You said, that's strong. And he's a driver. So that's strong, but not so bad. I can handle this. But then we did some stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. And by about the third or the fourth, he was feeling quite uncomfortable and quite nauseous and saying, yes, that's the sort of sensation that I experience in turbulence. And at that point, I got him, we put on some music, he bounced in the seat, I did the same thing, he said, yeah, that's much better. There's a video I've made of how to manage your turbulence, bounce in the seat, more new ways of handling turbulence. Go and look for that one. That's what we did. Then we found a very private area and I said, it's clear you drive the car. And what do you think? Do you think his experience of driving the car was more scary for him initially or was it being a passenger? If you said passenger, you're wrong. It was more scary as a driver. Again, he had expectations that the car would drive just like his car. When he took it for a drive, oh! and after about the second or the third, zero to 100 kilometers an hour, zero to 60, his apprehension and, and, and oh my God, his violation of expectations turned around into excitement. This is so much fun. He'd mastered his violation of expectations and that's what I want you to do. Master your violation of, oh my God, what's my body doing? And say, I know what it's doing. I know what it's experiencing. I'm gonna master this. That's the excitement. You don't have to like the sensations. You can like mastering your ability to handle it. In my next video coming up, we're going to look at a very different way of uh, situation of people violating expectations and that's people singing songs. Stay tuned for that one. Bye for now.